Look at those beautiful, look at that system gathering. Look, it's, it's going to dump. Anyway, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays a Botany Dozen. Today we're at about 10,000 feet in beautiful Querétaro, Mexico. And we're on, as you can see, some calcareous rock, former ocean sediments. This actually looks like it's been cooked a little bit. Looks like it's been turned into marble. And what you're looking at, we got agave, agave samiana. Uh, you got a bunch of oaks, quercus species. Got the... Uh, Weeping junipers, junipers flaccida. I got another species of juniper. I don't know if that's scopulorum or what. But just a fucking phenomenal landscape. Just gorgeous landscape. And uh, what we'll start off here. What we're looking at here is <laughs> the most beautiful astrolepis I have ever seen. Look at that. Look at that. It's just It's like almost blending in with the marble. Look at how fuzzy those leaf blades are. This is a desert fern. It's in the chylanthoid subfamily of Pteridaceae. Pteridaceae, the family, Pteridaceae, and it's just, I mean, this is, the fucking habitat is just intoxicating here. Look at this astrolepis, man. Somebody got to grow this from spore. Look at that. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's nice. Oh, my God. Look at all the scales. Look at all the trichomes. Look at that thing. This thing is adapted to just getting blasted with solar radiation and also uh, you know, during the thinner atmosphere. So you get, get a little bit more UV light up here than you do, you know, 10,000 feet below. Look at that. That is a goddamn fern. That's a desert fern. Astrolepis is an incredible genus. Lots of species in it. You get Astrolepis cochisensis in Arizona. We get Astrolepis integerima in South Texas. This species, though, is obviously growing at 10,000 feet on some calcareous substrate uh, with uh, these giant agave salmianas and some beautiful oaks that are covered in lichens and uh you got any talansias up there is it uh, to lots of oak diversity too Ep mexico is the epicenter of diversity in the genus quercus god look at that thing though that is just a fucking gorgeous fern ah oh, you prick if you don't love this you got something wrong with you you know you must have eaten paint chips as a kid all right let's keep moving on we gotta go Look at the new growth on this thing, too. I can't let it go. I can't let it go. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Perfect geometry. I'm getting a dopamine shot just looking at this thing. And then you got a Cerceum species, too, a thistle. You got a little sedum right there as well. The hell is that, huh? Look at that. A lot of nice stuff. You know, there's a lot of nice stuff up here. Look at this baccarus. This is really dominant, too. Not flowering right now. But uh, only 500 species in the genus Baccarus, the genus of coyote bush. Ah, oh, tons of oak diversity. Look at that. You got acorns maturing on there. See them little guys? That's where the pistillate, aka the female flowers, are on oaks. They're in the axles of the leaves. And then the male flowers, let's see if this dropped all its catkins already. I think it's done. The male flowers are just those little danglers, little dangling catkins. Looks like this is Quercus rugosa. Look at that dense indumentum of fuzz on the undersides of the leaves. And then they're kind of concave up top to shed, shed rain, shed moisture. Such an important tree. But probably a lot of, shit ton of good mushroom diversity here in the rainy season too. Just a monster of a fucking agave. <laughs> Look at that. That's... Oh, so good to see you. You're doing so well. Look at that monster, beefy fuck. Jesus Christ. Juniperus flaccida. It's a weeper. You get this in South Texas, too. I think just in the Chizos Mountains. Maybe in the Davis Mountains, too. Looking pretty good for the dry season. Another species of juniper. I don't know if that's Depiana or what. Oh, yeah, that's nice. What is that? Some metamorphous limestone right there. It's a metamorphous calcium carbonate marine sediments. It's like marble to me. What a nice landscape. No resort, just a dirt road. Oh, we got a nice Ipomia. Who's this? Look at that. Nice tube flower. That's, look, that's, I thought that was a pine log. That's an agave inflorescence. Holy shit. Look at these beasts. Oh, well, come on, I'm going to give you a kiss, all right? No, it's just platonic, don't worry. I'm just giving you a little kiss. 
Oh my God. Look at that. Look, there's an old one. Look at that. That's, that is the agave. That's the inflorescence. 10 inch diameter of breast height. That's hilarious. That agave is 12 feet across, man. Just a giant battery. Just a giant battery consisting of, I don't know, a couple, few decades worth of uh, sugar, photosynthesized sugar. 20 or 30 years worth of sun. Okay, so I had to stop again because it just looks so nice with the background of the marble and all the trichomes on those uh, pinna. Because, you know, Oliver Sacks was a big fern guy. He wrote a couple of books. I think he wrote just one book about ferns, but he spent a lot of time coming down here. He was into the chylanthoids, especially the chylanthoid ferns, the desert adapted ferns, the ferns that grow in fucking deserts. You got any sorry? Let's check out some sorry. I was gonna flip under, flip over to leaf blades. See if we got any sporan. Oh, look at that russety. Oh my god, that color. I can't I can't get enough of this. I gotta hold on to these thoughts next time I'm, you know, in an airport or a bank or some other place that makes me want to die inside. You know what I mean? God, that fucking <laughs> I can't. You know, you know, it's just, it's just kind of at a loss for words. So the benefit of producing such a tall inflorescence is that you're going to get noticed by pollinators, but also when your fruits mature after your flowers have been pollinated, and then they dehiss, they open, like you can see there, uh, you, they're going to open high up. So they're going to get, you're going to get good dispersal on the seeds, and they're probably, especially if it's a windy day, some might drop the first day they open, you know, and then probably for another month they'll be losing seeds slowly out of those uh those fruits so just you know especially during windstorms get carried off the get just get carried right off the fucking slope here we got a glandularia verbenaceae the family order lamiales this thing's obviously pollinated by some sort of damn lepidopteran i guess it could be a hummingbird too look at that no bees gonna be crawling in there and you got that long tube so hummers with their long beak or lepidopterans butterflies or moths with their long proboscis a nice one a little sky island we got a nice salvia right here this thing's probably going same thing lepidopterin butterfly or uh, or hummer probably a lot of nectar the base i'm guessing hummer on this this salvia okay so we're lurking here amir just showed me this we got a ping down here we got a carnivorous plant that's agave montana and then right here we got pinguicula moranensis and it's got a little nectar spur as you could see uh, for uh, whatever pollinates it. Again, I assume some butterfly or moth, but just it's crazy because, I mean, this is a desert. It's a sky island in a desert, but it's still, you know, no, most pings like it kind of wet. Look at that. Just beautiful little rosette leaves. We got more over here. Fuck yeah. I've seen this species in Oaxaca before at a lower elevation, but also just like growing on the duff, like in the shade. Well, there's an old flower of one. It fell off. Look at that. Oh, there's the ovary. There's the fruit. Just looks like a little ass. Glands on that uh, inflorescent stalk on that peduncle. Fuck me, man. Oh, how is it? I don't understand how it's growing here, though. It's crazy. And I normally think they you normally think they need wet conditions. Wow, look at that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. God, what a fucking incredible plant. Holy shit. And of course, agave montana, which is just epic inflorescence when it goes off. And uh, down that way, you got uh, yeah, you got some gypsum outcrops. It looks like probably some cool cacti too. This is nice. This is so good. It feels so nice to be here around all of you. You know. Yeah. Underneath, I guess that's rugosa. It doesn't really look like rugosa, much smaller leaves, but underneath an oak. Because again, Mexico is the center of oak diversity. Tons of cool composites, asteraceae down there, tons of good shit. Just fucking wild, man. Just what a special place. Yeah, what a special place. Look at this snail. Look at the caracol. Just, just lurking, just hanging, just post it up. You know, he's sealed there with a little snot, a little snot seal, little snot door. Wonder what composite this is, Asteraceae, for sure. 
You gotta look at those phyleries. Glabrous leaves, no hairs. And growing here at 10,000 feet. Jesus Christ. We got another... Oh, that's not a chylanthoid. What is this? I can't even... I don't gotta see some sporangia. It looks like pteridaceae, though. Yeah, you got that, that folded over... That pseudo indusium on the leaflet. Yeah, you know, I just... I, I don't know what to look at. These these beautiful flowers on, a, on the pings that have found a way to uh, get nitrogen despite the, the fucked up condi conditions they live in. Or these beautiful uh, leaf scars on the uh, leaf blades of this agave montana. Just, oh God. But what, I mean, is this soil, this soil can't be that nitrogen poor, right? I mean, why are they trying, why are they supplementing their nitrogen? Look at how long the nectar spur is. It doesn't seem, I mean, you know, it's limestone, but it doesn't seem that fucked up. I mean, I've seen some fucked up soils. You go to serpentine barrens, you go, you know, acidic bogs or anything like that. But uh, but here, you know, it's just limestone. Is it that? Is it that tough? I guess so. Or you know, maybe you just figure out something good and you stick with it. But surely those leaves have to have the ability to just drop off and die without killing the plant. So maybe the plant stays alive. You know, it's got a, a root it can uh, come back from. Who knows? Semi-succulent root or what? Pinguicula morinensis, everybody. Look at that. Beautiful bastard. Yeah, see, everybody's growing at the base of a at the base of a rock. See that? So there must be more moisture. There's a little bit more soil moisture under the base of that rock, but I mean, it's still it's you know it's it's dry to the touch right there. So rich leaf stuff though, and probably a rich fungal community as well. What the shit is this? This looks like a Roldana, maybe, which is a Senecio. Senecioid aster. Aster, I see. Got a nice uh, Castilea right here, paintbrush. Post flower, but uh, you can at least get a, get a feel for what's going on. Look at those sepals, that whole calyx swollen around the ovary. Beautiful color to the leaves. Obviously, parasitizing this composite with the glabrous opposite leaves. Look at the cones on um, Juniperus flaccida. Not, not technically berries because it's not a flowering plant. It's a conifer in the redwood family. But you got one of them rusts too. Ugh, ugh. What is that? What species of rust is that? Jesus Christ, look at that. Holy hell. wonder if that's one of the ones that's got the alternate hosts or what. What a beautiful tree though. You know, really, really craftsman style wall right there again with the astrolepis too i like how they placed it there looks nice anyway go on a mountain that's high enough in mexico and sure enough you'll come across a penstemon species look at those four stamens looking like scaffolding hoping holding that big ass flower open perfect size for a bee to get in there and look at how those anthers dehisce can you see them dehissing in there like little purple boomerangs and you got that staminode doesn't appear to have a beard on it it's a staminode, so it's a it's a sterile stamen, and that's what the you know most of them are bearded. They got trichomes on them, and that's what gives the penstemon the common name beard tongue. And then the style is up there, too. Oh yeah, look at them! Look at how them uh, anthers are. Isn't this nice? You got linear leaves. I saw this further down, but the flowers hadn't opened. Okay, so we just had to go ahead and dissect the flower. Yeah, it's got to see what's going on. You got that staminode, and then you got those anthers. They hissing. God, look, they're fucking juicy. Looks looks, looks like a hemorrhoid cushion almost. You know. Or what are those those the pillows you steal from the airport? You know, with the you know, so your neck doesn't hurt if you fall asleep. And then there's a style uh, right back there. See, so just like a, just a white rod without a hemorrhoid, hemorrhoid cushion on it. You can see how the the anthers are dehissing. They're splitting open, and then there's all those tiny white pollen grains that I wish I had the magnification to show you. Because God is a cool. But this is Penstemon campanulatus. There's so many. There's so much Penstemon diversity in Mexico. I've seen like six foot tall ones before look at this what do we got here another interesting comp it's either a stevia or an agratina i'm leaning towards stevia because it's only got <clears throat> five florets in a capitula the capitulum is just the little vase that holds all the, the flowers because remember we got a composite flower and of course they got those long 
Styles poking out there in the same tribe as Joe Pieweed, the Stevia tribe. Stevia, of course, refers to Stevia rebaudiana from Brazil, you know, which is the artificial sweetener, but Stevia, the genus, has, uh, I think, like 80 species in it. I don't know, quote me. It's got a fuck lot of species in it. Maybe not 80. Look what's going on here. Look at this wax that's being produced uh, to protect those leaves. That's remarkable. I wonder what's in there. Most stevias are, are bitter, if this is a stevia. If it's an agratina, then I'm just wasting the last 20 seconds of talking, so maybe I should can it. But either way, agratina, stevia, both genera are in the same tribe. And this thing is uh, this thing's just doing its thing here on the marble, growing at fucking 10,500 feet. I'm going to be thinking about this astrolepus for the next five years of my life, man. That's how touched I am, huh? Oh. Excuse me, spiritual fuels, you know, because there's so much shit I don't want to see. There's so many people I don't want to see. No offense to them. You know, what was that quote? I don't hate people. I just feel better when they're not around. Some people I love. People can always, you know, they can always charm you. But there's, I think I, I blame society. Let's get done. Actually, I blame, you know, two million years of primate evolution and our weird neurochemistry as a result of evolutionary natural selection. That, that aside, what makes these mountains go up? Only where you have a convergent boundary between two plates. You know, you got, was it the Cocos Plate to the southwest that caused the uplift here? Or was it the Farallon Plate? R.I.P. All right, R.I.P. Remember the Farallon Plate. Long gone, but not forgotten. But either way, you know, something caused this uplift. You got a convergent plate boundary. All right, that's the map I pay attention to. Biome maps and tectonic maps. I don't give a fuck about geopolitical this or that. I don't give a shit about it. It's all boring to me. That's the shit I care about. What's down there? Look at that. You got a lot of nice stuff down there, I bet, don't you? Look, another stevia. Again, you gotta look at the, I guess, the, I think I looked at the key break once and it was like number of florets in a capitulum. This is super waxy. You got that red stem, almost looks like a backrest. You got opposite leaves, linear leaves, and it's not, it's not short and squat with the rounded stems like the other one, or rounded leaves like the other one. So much asteraceae diversity. Yeah, I just stop and take a leak. You don't mind, do you? You know, you're fine. Is that what that is up there? Or is that it? Yeah, that's it. Notable, a coalescent. And of course, there's that uh, Bacchus. So many Bacchus, and I love them all. Collect them all, you know? Collect an herbarium voucher of them all, and then accession them at a university. That's what you should do. And then, of course, we got Budlea cordata. You know, I'm surprised. I've been in Mexico for three days. I didn't see this plant yet because it's everywhere. You see it growing out of abandoned buildings in some of the cities. It's a ruderal plant, and for that, I respect it. And it can form trees, too. Look at the look at the leaves. Jesus Christ, I never really realized. There's many different ecotypes as well. I think there's like four or five different ecotypes of this plant. Ugh, standing on a palace, excuse me. But, uh, God, look at the scales on those. Holy shit. Looks like it's got spray foam insulation on opposite leaves, order Lamiales, Scrofulariaceae. That's a beautiful, look at that thing. Built for the drought. Ugh. And again, they get a lot bigger than this. Oh, look at that. That's all Nolina. A coalescent Nolina. Look at that. Jesus Christ, that's be what a beautiful, what a banger. With tons of agave. Is that Midas? Agave Midas in the understory. I'm going to go up. I don't know what this is, but something's browsing on it heavily. Just reduce the woody stems. I'm going to go with, maybe it's Rosaceae. Maybe it's the Rose family. A lot of nice stuff. Oh, and there's an Arctostaphylos too. What is that, Pungens? Gotta be. Yeah, look at that. Arctostaphylos pungens. Manzanita. It's got those leaf miners in it too, with that beautiful, that beautiful red bark. Look, it's a Crumholst manzanita. Crumholst Arctostaphylos pungens. We got a roost too. What is this, Virens? No, it's not Virens. I think you get Virens this far south. Wonderful Venetia, though. Sumac family, Anacardiaceae. Poison oak, mango family, Anacardiaceae. I'm a little winded. We're at like 10.6 right now. 
What is that in meters? It's like three, maybe a little under three. Oh, that's nice. Oaks and Nolinas growing together. Yeah, I thought that was that's Illyrian from down below. No way. Look how broad those leaves are. Holy shit. You get Nolina palmeri in the desert, in Mojave Desert. Get Nolina texanum, no, Nolina lindheimeri in Texas. Look at this nice little mat of uh, manzanita, of arctostaphylos. How the shit you get an Akalif out there? That's got to be a different species than the one we've been seeing down below. Yeah, look at the margin on those leaves. Euphorbiaceae. Is this a dioecious species? It looks like it. Those are the female flowers right there. Echolip is a cool one. Yeah, see, and there's a male. Oh, I gotta, I gotta snag a photo of the male. There's the male. There's a female. And there's a, call it the agave celsii. Mixed in with agave montana. This place must get dumped on with snow occasionally too. Look at it, it's got a gentle touch. They're right, keeping a little bit of defenses up. Oh, but they're soft, those spines. This is a gentle, a gentle bastard. There's a whole lot more of them up there, forming wonderful little colonies. Almost looks like that agave I saw in the cloud forest of the Dominican Republic. Robust, look at that. That is a robust colony. So apparently it forms offsets. This is one of those things you could, I mean, if you tried to grow it in extreme heat down below, it might survive for a little while, but it's not gonna thrive. It's spent however long being selected for, having its metabolism selected for, for this elevation. For high elevation and cool, cool temperatures. Look at that, Nolina parviflora. Yeah, I thought that was at the Sodol at first that we were seeing further down below. But look how thick those leaf blades are. Tons of Nolina diversity. Nolina palmer is the only coalescent one that I know of in the United States. There might be one or two more. You know, coalescent that forms a stem. Otherwise we get Nolina texanum, Nolina lindheimeri. You know, biogeography is always interesting to think about. How do these how do these species get around? Looks like we're getting a Getting some, we getting some weather or just the front? I don't know. It's going to be hard to fucking record. I'm going to put the camera down for a minute. God, look at him. Bulbous. Just old just old leaves. So this thing's got to be old as fuck. I mean, that's... You know, they grow pretty slow. And the only reason they get a stem in the first place is just because it's the, the leaf that moving up as it grows. So that's got to be 70 years old probably, maybe longer. Nice elephant foot for a trunk. Beautiful agave colony. And then, of course, we got our little echeveria, too. So maybe it doesn't snow. I don't know. It's echeveria secunda. Just like the Dudleyas that you get in California, except these are on a summer rain, uh, summer rain regime, whereas Dudleyas are generally winter rain. But same family, Crassulaceae, the New World Crassulaceae, which look markedly different from the Old World Crassulaceae, say, in South Africa. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Look at that oxidized soil over there, that red. I wonder what that's caused from. Hopefully you got some out of that. A lot of interesting stuff here. A lot of good stuff. You know, Mexico's not the... Uh, tarnish their land like the U.S. has. The U.S. just had too much. Didn't know how to appreciate it. Hunted the shiny shit more. And so got rid of most of it. Maybe Mexico would do the same if they get the... Maybe they'll still do it. There's still time, you know? But, uh... God, that's stevia, man. Look at that. But it's nice that there's places in the world like this that are still left, you know? They're getting fewer with every passing year, but they're still there. Agave Montana, everybody. Give it a round. Anyway, that's all I got. Have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Look at it. Just a big fat battery. I love it. 
Just a big fat storage pineapple of uh, carbohydrates. Look, he stores some rain too. That's important. That's a nice, that's nice of him to do. God, these things are epic when they bloom. I wish there was an inflorescence to show you. They get these huge sheathing bracts that subtend these these giant panicle branches of flowers. Just a, just a bounty for all the pollinators when they bloom. Nice thymophila right here. Look, you got some of them mites. You got bugs. Look at that guy. What's he doing? Weird-ass arachnid, you know? I've seen another one. Is he just, hopefully he's just going for plants. You know, because otherwise you get you know, get these guys on your ass. I hate chiggers, by the way. You know, distant relative, well, close enough relatives, but you know what I mean? No chiggers up here, thank God. Oh, that's some nice, look at this, is it calcite or what is that? Look at it, it's some crystallization. So this stuff got cooked, either from being buried or from being in close proximity to uh, igneous rocks. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, look at this. So they were mining here too, but look at that stuff. Definitely some hot metamorphic action going on. This stuff got cooked at some point. These Cretaceous marine sediments got cooked. Holy shit, look at that. Rock. That's beautiful. Oh, that's nice. You know, some yuppie would want that as, as a countertop. Wow, that music is something else. I tell you, you know, that's a special sound to hear it's 6 30 in the morning that's you know you hear that you know that's going to be a game changer for today that's really going to spice things it's going to make you just make your day rife with positivity you know positivity like a case of bed bugs wow thank you look at it they got that marmol the marble from the mound that we were just at you know because it's all this metamorphosed limestone they got that that's paving the streets and then it gets polished by people driving on it. That's look at this fucking beautiful. You got streets not paved with gold, but with marble. All right? Local regional geology lesson. Metamorphous limestone. But what cooked the limestone? Was there a contact body of igneous rock? Look, we're in this beautiful little town, this little plaza. Alright, a plaza in the town. And uh, you know, I'm just eating the tuna, I got chingos, they fruit us. Okay, over here, you got to cut them. You can't chew them seeds. You got to swallow them, all right? Just like you're swallowing a pill or a fucking, you know, like a horse pill or something. Well, they're not that big. But, you know, but they're great. I'll eat like nine of them. Goes right through you, cleans out your tubes, makes you shit real nice. It's good. Everybody got to do it. They got a big boulder of marble. We're sitting here. You know what? They're playing music for us. They've been with wide variety of musical tastes. We had some flute earlier you felt like i was in like a new age rock shop or something then we went on to like 1980s telenovela style uh they were playing some new orleans big band music sounded like a little bit of herb, Al herb albert tijuana brass but i just want to comment on some of the horticultural tastes here very common stuff you see in some of these mexican places we got ericaria heterophila could be actually ericaria columnaris they're kind of indistinguishable without the cones but uh you know, every granny's got one of them in a front yard if you live in a, a warm enough climate, say Florida or South Texas or whatever. Then we got this guy up here, uh, one of the Casarina species. Looks like a pine, but it's not. And I will say these are horrible when planted in the Northern Hemisphere in horticulture, but it's an incredibly cool uh, family of trees, the Casarinaceae in the Southern Hemisphere, especially in Australasia. They are fucking amazing. Those are not pine needles. Those are photosynthetic shoots. These are from, uh, they're basically dry adapted plants. They're drought adapted plants. Uh, and so they've lost their leaves and they uh, associate with nitrogen fixing Frankia uh, bacteria in the soil. And, uh, and they're just fucking incredible. I mean, especially, they're such an important part of the ecology where they're native. And you get a shit ton of diversity, you know? But when they're just planted on a roadside and they got a bunch of garbage around them, they don't look so nice. So, uh, but they're not pines. They're not pines. They're fruits look like a pine cone like a little mini pine cone it's like like maybe like that big you know that big i don't know inch or two but uh it's actually an infrastructure it's a compound fruit. i don't see any on here right now but i just you know i like these guys oh you got some up there i like these trees see that there's a there's those are the fruits a compound fruit. i like these trees a lot of people don't like them i like them they're fine i think they're fine i just don't want any you know planted in uh in my yard and i kind of hate seeing them on the roadside but they every species has a place all right just because humans fuck it up and 
you know, you make it all deranged and shit, plant shit way out of their ecological context. Every species has a native range and an ecosystem to which it's a part of. And this whole family, there's some wild members of this family. Seen some wild motherfuckers in New Caledonia, in Western Australia, some really cool, really cool members of Cassarinaceae, and they're in the same order as oaks, the Falgalis. Anyways, that's all I got. Have a great rest of the day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.